Spring has definitely sprung here in the Northeast and it's time to take that energy and start decluttering. Hello everyone and welcome back to A Hoarder's Heart. On this episode, we're gonna be decluttering the laundry room. Now this is per request by Hubby because it is sunny outside, it's 60 degrees, and it feels like spring. And the back door is blocked so that we can't go easily outside into the backyard. Now, yes, the laundry room has become hoarded again, Blocked entrances is considered level for hoarding, but now I am more self-aware of why the hoard came back. First, this is a year's worth of not straightening up because I don't do a weekly routine of decluttering the laundry room like I do the kitchen and the living room and even now my bedroom and the kids' bedrooms. We're not really doing that. This just kind of gets forgotten because it is the connection or the transition between the main house going into the garage, which is that door right over here. Now, that's going to cause it for to be rehorded. The other thing is that this is very easy for me to drop and go because it's the in-between space coming from the house, bringing stuff out to the garage to throw out, or a child sees something that I'm throwing out and they say, no, 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 please, please don't throw that out yet. And I kind of drop it here. There's multiple reasons why this is a high traffic drop off zone for me. And now that I'm so very aware of it, we can really change it. But there's also, Another reason why it's continuously being rehorded. It is a baseline for me. It's so subconscious that I don't realize how much stuff I'm dropping and going. But there's also another reason. And this is where I'm going to introduce the hoarder's version of the boundary method. Now, lately I've been seeing a lot about the boundary method of decluttering. I think Dana K. White called it like the container method, where basically, for example, if you have a drawer and there's t-shirts in there, that's its home. That's where it's contained. Once that starts to overflow or get overpacked, it's crossing the boundary. We need to declutter so that it fits within its boundary again. And I'm going to be including that more in my videos because I, I do like where we're going here. I can visualize that. I'm very visual. But there is a hoarder version of the boundary method, and that is controlling what's coming into the house so that we're not continuously filling it back up after we decluttered. This is a different boundary. Now we've already established some of those boundaries by doing the no spend challenge that has helped me immensely from, uh, impulse buying or just not even realize what I'm picking up. And then it just adds to the pile. Like I said, with that, uh, Rachel Cruz video, only 30% of the hoard is from shopping. The other 70% has been a hand-me-down, dropped off to me, thrift shopped and curbed, picked up. There are still things being dropped off to me. Where I need to establish a boundary is that a lot of stuff, especially that might show up in here, has been dropped off to me by a friend. And I don't wanna give too much description on the friend who's been dropping off, but basically, I know the intention behind them dropping off stuff to me is to help me. And if I can't use it, hey, I got my Facebook Towns giving page that I'm an admin to, and I can just post it right there and give it to somebody else. They know I have hoarding disorder and they know I'm trying to clean it out. I think they think that I've recovered enough that I can handle it and I'm doing such a good job either being resourceful and using it or giving it to somebody else. So the issue is not the person dropping it off. The issue is me and myself not creating a boundary and telling them, 
that's okay, give it to somebody else. I don't need it. Why? Because I feel so guilty telling them no, it's on me. They have no idea how I'm feeling internally. They just see it as them blessing me. And the reason why I'm having the hardest time defining this boundary from somebody dropping off stuff to me is because I'm afraid I'm going to deeply hurt their feelings and make them upset if I do so. Because you all know that how I show love, my love language of showing it to someone else is gift giving. I love creating something for them or putting something together that I think they're gonna love and giving it to them. Of course, I'm a hoarder. This stuff has always made me feel safe, secure, and happy. So in my mindset and behavior, giving it to someone else is also expressing that love. The other thing that it pulls on when I want to say no <laughs> is that I was bullied really badly pretty young and that rejection of no still hurts and it still triggers that I don't want to hurt somebody else by telling them no so I'll just deal with it to make them happy. And honestly, I really thought that I could handle the stuff being dropped off to me because I was doing really well and I was putting a lot of stuff on the Facebook giving page that I was not using. But the truth is that I still got a lot going on. I'm still working. I'm trying to do the YouTube channel full time and I'm a full time mama. There's already a lot on my plate. So I can't keep adding more on my plate because there's just not enough time. So that's why this boundary as a hoarder is key to me recovering. I have to control the amount of stuff coming in if I'm ever going to clear this out because as stuff is leaving, it's still coming in and I'll just continue this cycle over and over again if I don't define that boundary. Whenever we take time to reflect and to really dive in deep into our emotions, that is all part of our healing process and changing these lifelong behaviors. Because yes, a lot of these items were gifted to me, but I also noticed that a lot of it was empty boxes. And these were things that I did not take completely to the recyclable section in the garage. I dropped it off in the laundry room, most likely due to my ADHD, because I was probably in a rush, just dropped it there thinking, oh, I'll remember to take it another time, and I never completed the task, and another time never came back around. That's why I've been using my don't put it down put it away mantra so that next year you won't see me throwing away boxes that I should have thrown away six months ago. And as I try to clean up this floor, I realize that it doesn't matter how hard I try, this floor is from 1969 and I just cannot get this clean. But you know what? It's okay. It looks better than what it was. And honestly, we can dream and put on our vision board that we would love to have new flooring in this laundry room one day. Now, I don't have one big tossy tossy pile to show you because I threw everything out as I was doing it. Tomorrow is trash day. And I wanna make sure that I am fully completing this task for today. And now hubby will be so happy to see that this is all cleared out and we all can easily access the backyard as we should. The days are getting longer and warmer. And as a whole family, we do love being outside, that outdoor living. We love eating a meal outside as well. Speaking of outdoor living, 
this section can definitely use a little declutter and especially over here where we eat. And I definitely this spring want to do a lot of DIY videos for outdoor living to save money. And for today, we're going to be celebrating this victory. In the month of April, we will be continuously decluttering in this laundry room. The next section that we're going to tackle is this right here where there's a lot of crafts and this is by the garage door. And of course, this is going to be the segue to start decluttering and organizing my craft hoard. And my hope and my prayer is that this video motivated and encouraged you to clean and declutter something in your home today too.